My name is Lon Allen and I'm on the board of directors of KCAT Channel 15, which is our community television station here in Monte Serino. Welcome to Coffee and Candidates. The upcoming election is very important as three of the five council seats are open. To help us understand the issues, Dr. Larry Gersten, a political analyst with a nationwide reputation, will be interviewing the candidates. Uh, Dr. Gersten will ask the candidates about the issues that will be before the council the next four years. Please listen carefully so you could determine which candidates have a vision that mirrors your own. As a former mayor of Monte Serino, I can tell you that it is very important that we have a city council that reflects the values of our community. Lastly, I'd like to encourage you to let us know whether our community television station is meeting your needs. We have a very short three question survey on our website, kcat.org. So please go up and let, let us know how we are serving this community of Monte Serino. Thank you very much. Hey there, I'm hosting Coffee and the Candidates this morning at the KCAT Studios. Want to see what it's all about? Come on in. Hi everybody. Hi Larry. Good to see you. I love my coffee. And thank you, Cafetilla, for providing this coffee throughout this series of Coffee and the Candidates. Well, hello there, my name is Larry Gersten. Welcome to Coffee and the Candidates. This presentation, and there are others with it, uh, are all brought to you by KCAT and the Los Gatos Community Foundation. The reason for this is because we've got some important elections in the town of Los Gatos and the city of Montesorino. Uh, November 6th, I'm sure you're aware of that date, and while you may be involved with a number of elections at different levels, let's remember that nothing touches us more than our city council folks and the mayors and whatnot because we see them all the time. So we're very fortunate to meet with the candidates. Today we have Javed Elahi, who's with us, uh, with, uh, at running for uh, council uh, in the city of Monasterino. Welcome, glad you're here. Thank you so much, Dr. Ashton. And it's my pleasure to be here and thank you for putting this together. Terrific, so, you know, you're running uh, for, tap for the city council. You haven't run for the city council before. You've been a member of, of the Monasterino community for several years. What makes you run? Well, I mean, part of it is because I have been living in Monte Serino since 1987, and I feel I, it's time for me to give something back to the community. I'm semi-retired now. I practiced law for about 40 years. Uh, now I'm kind of limiting my practice to certain things. And I have raised four children in this community. They've been very fortunate to have grown up in this beautiful city. My son, Umar, went to Los Gatos High School, which is right here, and uh, uh, played football. He gave up about five bones for the cats while he was playing football. <laughs> so I need to give something back, too, to the city. And that's, <laughs> that's my you know, reason to run. It's my privilege to run, actually. Hopefully you won't be giving up bones. <laughs> well, hopefully not. <laughs> hopefully not. <laughs> You've been living in, in your town now, Mano Serino, for more than 20 years. What's it like today compared to what it was 20 years ago? I think Monte Serino has that charm that has still pretty much still there. I mean, there's been a few houses that have been demolished. There have been some houses that have been rebuilt. But generally, the city still enjoys the same charm, the countryside charm, the trees are growing. Unfortunately, some of them, because of the drought, have died, and uh, we need to do something about cutting those trees down. Um, but it's been a good city. The citizens have been there, and it's, uh, I mean, my neighbors, when I moved in in 1987, they're still my neighbors. So, I mean, that's a wonderful place to be and to know your neighbors, you know, who are part of the community. So you have a real continuity in that community. Absolutely. And, and how is that continuity um, dealing with the housing now that is uh, going to be built in the annexed area uh, where uh, Hacienda is and, will, uh, and I guess will be tor torn down uh, and now becoming part of, of the city of Montesorino, building those 34 uh, low-cost housing units. How's the community reacting to that? Well, the majority of the community lives on the, I guess that would be the east side of the Highway 9, and will not 
see much impact. Uh, unfortunately, the people who will probably see more of an impact is the surrounding areas, which is mostly Saratoga citizens, and they have been present at the city council meetings, express their concerns. Now, there are some parts of Montesorino in that area also. Uh, I think my main concern would be whether developers would now believe that there's open season on Montesorino, that because one developer was able to obtain a permit to develop so many units, whether they can come in and start uh, uh, lobbying the city of Montesorino and make, uh, uh, have more development in the city. If that happens, that would have a severe impact on Montesorino. But there's no place to develop. I mean, there's a, a one or two lots left uh, that, that couldn't hold very many uh, developments other than a house or two. I mean, uh, this is the only big area, right? This was a bigger area, but there are five acre lots in Montesorino. Mm -hmm. And so anybody could come in and say, okay, I have five acres. You gave somebody the right to build 15 units on five acres. Give me the same right. Even though it's not zoned for that. Even though it's not zoned. So we know how it's done. You lobby and you lobby and you lobby and ultimately you sue the city and then you arrive at a settlement. And so that's a real concern. And hopefully, uh, but the citizen monastery are not going to tolerate that. I think the reason uh, the Hacienda project was successful is because the citizens who were living next to the Baptist church wanted to make sure there was no development there. So I don't think it's happening, but the citizens need, need to be vigilant to make sure uh, developers don't think there's open season on Montessori. You know? In this case, it, it was more like the state who thought it was open season on Montessori, you know, to the extent that they said, hey, you've got to build this low cost housing or else pretty much, right? Yeah. Well, didn't this, wasn't this kind of handed to you without much of a choice? Well, there's a requirement to build low cost, build multi-housing actually. And, it, and this housing in Hacienda is not really low cost housing. It might end up becoming moderate cost housing. Uh, the state requires Montecino to build about 61 units. The way Montecino handles the low cost housing is by having uh, accessory developmental units, which is basically granny units. Mm -hmm. That are being built, uh, uh, quite a few of them have been built and they seem to, they're encouraging the build up. Uh, and that would satisfy the low cost, uh, you know, there's low income housing and then there's, there's very low income housing, there's moderate income housing. So those are the things that need to be satisfied. The higher end housing obviously is, you know, very satisfied. Yeah. So, so those are going to be built. Um, on, the, on the accessory development unit, what also needs to be done is, well, Montessori is encouraging that. Uh, people who are building those, you know, they're not developers. It's a homeowner who's building a, a accessory unit. They are, may not be familiar with all the requirements, the fire, uh, you know, safety requirements. There are many of them. I was talking to a homeowner uh, who mentioned, you know, he built his unit and then he was told he had to have sprinklers in the unit. And then there was issue of where a fire hydrant should be. And, you know, with, do you need sprinklers or you don't need sprinklers if there's a fire hydrant out there? Uh, there was an issue on, there's a driveway that goes through the unit in the back. There was an issue, is that would the driveway be able to sustain a fire truck or not? He found out that after he was into the project. So we need to make sure that that information goes to the homeowner and, you know, he's helped with developing those accessory units. Does the town right now, that's a very interesting point you're making, does, does the town right now have a program uh, in place uh, for homeowners that might want to build gra uh, granny units? Um, or is this something that it would be part of your platform that we, the town needs to do? I think the town encourages it and has, you know, people who are building it and they're encouraged. I don't think the town, I don't know if the town is affirmatively going out and saying, you know, build a granny unit and help us out. But yeah, maybe we need to be more aggressive about it. Maybe give some sort of uh, a, a benefit to the to to somebody who builds one of these things to help meet the uh, the requirement. Uh, I, I, some sort of a refund or on part of the cost. I have no idea, but some inducement. Uh, yeah, it, it needs to be looked at to see, especially if it's for low income housing and so, uh, other things like that. Because yeah. the the town, I believe, does have a rent. Uh, if you if you agree to some kind of a rent control, there is some benefits that the town gives you. So that is in place. Okay, that's good. But, you know, we mentioned Highway 9 uh, and, of course, the, uh, the building that's going to take place across. There's also a lot of traffic on Highway 9. We correct, know that. Correct. Um, are you comfortable with the way traffic is zipping along Highway 9? Some people think it goes awfully fast, uh, even when there's a 55-mile-an-hour speed limit or 50, whatever it is. It's faster than that. At 40, it's faster than that. Are you comfortable with that? Well, I, I, you know, at this point, it's considered uh, somewhat of a highway, so yeah. traffic is going to zip, be zipping past fairly fast. Uh, once those units get built, then that needs to be t uh, looked at, especially if 
you have students in that, those units that are going to be then going across the freeway and attending Dave School. You know, how do you handle that traffic? I mean, there's about 550 students in Dave School right now. Uh, it's one of the best schools. Those children, you know, their safety has to be ensured. The quality of education has to be ensured. Interestingly enough, on Dave's Avenue, uh, the Los Gatos Union School District only spends about $11,000 per student in its district. Compared to Saratoga, which spends $16,000 per, per, per student. So even with that, Dave's provides a really good quality education and it, you know, we, we need to do whatever needs to be done to make sure that continues. But, but now you're talking about what, um, a traffic light, uh, uh, something at that, in that area to? I, 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 I would have to defer, you know, when you get on there to see exactly what's going on and I, I think the engineers will have to get involved to see what's necessary and what needs to be built. Is it a traffic light? Do you need to do a walkover bridge on top of that for people to walk over? You know, I, it may be a lot of other things that may have okay. to be considered. But, but it's an area you want to look at. Yeah, it should be looked at, definitely. Okay. Definitely, with, you know, especially. And the question is, when do, do those houses get built? I mean, they have the zoning. Are they going to be building them right away? Are they going to wait another two, three years before that construction starts? So they'll give us a time to look at it. Okay. You know, we talk about traffic. It's such a big part of our communities here. And, and Highway 17, and while that goes through Los Gatos, it certainly affects nearby cities like, uh, like uh, Montecerino both in terms of Highway 9 and also uh, Winchester, which uh, uh, ultimately becomes um, um, the, the Los Gatos Street. Uh, what, what, what do you think about this? Um, uh, is, it, is this something that you think Montecerino needs to worry about or, or just deferring to Los Gatos and it's their problem? Well, I, I, Montecerino is part of Los Gatos at Saratoga, even though it's a separate entity. And certain things don't stop at the border. Traffic does not stop at the border. When Winchester gets crowded, and, well, actually, it starts with 17 getting crowded, then Winchester gets crowded. Traffic actually diverts through some of the inner parts of Montecino. I was talking to a neighbor on Kevin Street, which is off Dave's Avenue, and uh, you know he was really tired of the traffic, and he had come up with his own solution. He pulls out his garbage cans, puts them in the middle of the street, parks his car, <laughs> and then Waze decides that this is not the way to go. <laughs> So that was his solution. I don't know if we all need to do it. But I do think the community, there is a way for the community Talk to get involved. Talk about citizen involvement. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's not approbation. I'm just acknowledging. No, I mean, I, it's a creative solution. Uh, some people have thought about hacking ways. So they, you know, by, yeah. and, and, and the way you hack it is by every citizen in Montessori, you know, saying, oh, this street is really clogged. Don't come here. But I, I think uh, there may be some solutions. There are some signs. Uh, I think we may need to have an ordinance which basically puts a sign on Winchester Avenue that says between these hours on Saturday or Sunday or whichever the prime hours are, only local traffic is allowed through here. And then the cops can, the police officers can give them tickets as that happens. But how do they enforce that? Well, by, if, you, if the police officers get there and start checking on whether somebody has a, is a local resident or not by, by your driver's license, they can then say, okay, you're not, and you give them a ticket. Or, or even give them a pass for the first time around and give it to them the second time. But, and it, by they're doing that, they'll clog up the traffic anyway and Waze will say go somewhere else. Mm. So, I, that, you know, so there, are, there are some solutions. I mean, the citizens, local citizens may be encouraged to have a placard that says, okay, we're monitoring a residence, so the police, you know, the full police officers can wave them by. Some so, people have talked about maybe widening Highway 17 and that part from, uh, from Lark uh, down to Highway 9. Uh, uh, part of it's already widened and then it narrows. Um, do you think that makes any sense or does that just kick the can down the road? I, I, I mean, widening highway pro, uh, uh, highways when you're, they're going through mountains is a very tricky business. I mean, but just until know. Lark? Yeah, un uh, Highway 9 until Lark. Uh, Lark until Highway 9, excuse me. Yeah, yeah the Lark until Highway 9, there's still a fair amount of, I mean, I, I suppose you could probably, there may be some portions that you can move it, but I, I don't know if that's going to solve the problem. The traffic backs up for you know, an hour, 45 minutes. I don't think one extra lane is going to make much of a difference there. You said you wanted to give back, uh, which I think is a noble thing. My own, my own feeling is anybody running for office is doing a noble thing. Thank you. What's your, what's your most important goal? Elect me because I want to. Well, there's, there's, the, the one thing I'm concerned about now is the fire issues that I think we need to talk about. There was 4,000 fires in, the, in, in California last year. I think about seven people lost their life. There's about you know, hundreds of homes that were burned and about $320 million worth of property damage. Uh, we're in the Santa Cruz Mountains. It's, you know, we've been, that, the fire hasn't happened, but all that may mean 
is there's more fodder out there for the fire. So we need to take a look at it. I, I, I'd like to have people look at their houses to see how many uh, dead or dying trees they have on their houses. It costs a couple thousand dollars to cut those trees down. So homeowners find it, you know, they'll, they'll try to avoid doing that. We need to examine that. We need to make sure there's fire hydrants where there's county lines because the city may have fire hydrant, but the county may not. And But if a fire truck goes there and there's no fire hydrants, it may be a problem. So I, I think we need to prepare for that. Uh, Governor Brown signed a bill last week, I believe, in which uh, there are funds available for fire safety. The cities will get a cut out of that. Nonprofit organizations will get a cut out of that. So we need to make sure we get our share. Would you favor uh, an ordinance that uh, requires an, a homeowner to keep uh, a, an area so many feet uh, around his house clear of brush if he's in an area that's, that's remote, um, that isn't easily accessible to fire trucks uh, as, as, a, as some sort of a barrier? Would you favor that? Uh, I, I think that needs to be looked at to see you know, what, what is there, but uh, it's a common sense thing. I think at this point, the fire uh, police, the fire chiefs will get to the home if there is a report that this is going on. So I believe that may already be in place that you're supposed to keep that clean. But it needs to be monitored, and how you monitor that is another question. Uh, there is obviously the question is, do you want to be intrusive? The homeowners you know, have the right to enjoy the privacy of their homes. Uh, but uh, certain things do need to be looked at. Okay, and, and that's why you're running for office. Yes. Javed Alehi, thank you so much. It's good, good luck to you sir. on the campaign trail. It's my pleasure. And thank that's so another much. edition of Coffee and the Candidates. For the record, KCAT TV reached out to all the candidates running for Los Gatos Town Council and Montesorino City Council. Candidates Steve Leonardis and Ben McLean did not respond to our invitation.